What's up everyone, Daniel here with the Punocha YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning in today, I appreciate you. Within this video, I want to share with you all the method to my madness when it comes to horse racing in GTA 5 online. Should you have any questions at any point throughout this video, I'm going to encourage you to drop a comment down below and I'm going to do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell as I'm going to be bringing more videos like this for you all. I do have social medias under the same name as this YouTube channel. I would truly appreciate your support on there as well. With that being said, let's dive straight on into this. One thing that I want to start with by saying in this tutorial is that there is no 110% foolproof way to win each and every single time we play a horse race in GTA 5 online. In the end, it's kind of just calculated choices that ultimately we get lucky with but however there is ways to go about optimizing your chances of winning and i'm going to try to elaborate on all of that here in this video all the way down to my thought process my logic as to why i pick the horses that i do for the sake of a better tutorial, I decided when I sit down at a seat, I'm not going to get up until that 600,000 in chips reaches 1 million. Let's take it from the top here. It really doesn't matter what seat you pick. There is no lucky seat. One seat doesn't win more than the other or anything like that from my experience. You can pick any seat that you want. You just need to be able to place a bet. Now, before we start investing, I do feel like it's important to really know the rules, especially if this is something that you're going to be doing every time you log into GTA. I'll go ahead and read them out for us here. It does say the aim of the inside track is to select a virtual horse that will place first in the race, play alone in a single event, or choose to bet on the main event with other players. The next part says horse odds affect the chance of the horse placing first. Horses with lower odds have a higher chance of performing well in the race. There are no differences in the horse odds between the single event and the main event. Each race will consist of two favorites, evens 5 to 1, 2 middle of the pack 6 to 1, 15 to 1, and 2 outliers 16 to 1 and 30 to 1. I know that none of this makes sense right now, but once we actually get into the horse racing, a lot of this information starts to click. If we go on into the actual horse events and click on the middle button rules, it brings up this page right here. The top says horse odds. There are 99 horses. Each individual horse has fixed odds between evens 1 to 1 and 30 to 1. The odds for each horse are always the same and never change between races. Horses with lower odds have a higher chance of winning compared to those with higher odds. Betting. Players can only bet on one horse per race. Bets are placed for the horse to win. Bet limit. The minimum is 100 chips and the maximum is 10,000 chips. For me, I always place a maximum bet of 10,000 chips per bet. Main event. This race takes place once every five minutes and allows all the players in the session to bet on the same race. And the last part is single event. This is a race that players can play alone on the inside track computer. These races can be launched back to back with no wait timer between them. Now that we are more acquainted with the rules and everything, let's go ahead and get into the actual placing of some bets. Now I'm going to take a moment here and try to explain my logic and thought process behind the bets that I place. So right here, the lineup for this bet is going to be Lonely Step Brother at 3 to 1, Snatched Your Mama Breaking Out Even, Hard Time Done 18 to 1, Mr. Redacted at 19 to 1, we have Northern Lights at 15 to 1, and we have Ghost Dank at 10 to 1. Now the main variable that I'm considering and that I use to place my bets when it comes to horse racing is the performance of the horse. And I say performance because we're dealing with horses here in these horse races, but essentially the logic is the lower the number, the higher chances we have of winning. And it isn't always necessarily picking the lowest number we're going to win. That's not the logic that we want to use when it comes to horse racing. So my logic is to try to find a middle ground. I'm not going to necessarily always go for the lowest horse, and I'm not always necessarily going to go for the highest horse. In fact, I actually rarely ever go for the highest horse, and you're going to see here throughout this video, throughout this madness, that when I do go for the higher horses, my chances of winning kind of decline. So I always go for the middle ground, some sort of common ground. I try to go for a middle horse. Right now, Ghost Dank is looking pretty good to me, and so is Lonely Step Brother. I'm always liking to go for the positions of 1, 2, and or 6 as well. I always like to place bets on those three horses in those positions. So I'm taking a look at the odds of the horse as well as their positioning within their ranking here as well. So those are the variables that I'm considering to place my bets here. So right now I'm thinking to myself, Lonely Step Brother looks like a good position and some pretty decent odds. But I went ahead and I went with Ghost Dank because Ghost Dank seemed more of a middle ground for me. 
For me personally, I can't ever really bet on horses that break even. I just, something about that, I think I'm a little bit too greedy to bet on horses that break even, and that sometimes backfires on me. As you can see right here in this horse race, I really didn't even consider placing on the horse that was gonna break even. However, I should have considered it because that's the horse that won in this race right here. So as you can see, every race is not gonna be guaranteed. However, I personally feel that when we win, and it's, if we're winning in a consistent Executive manner, let's say like once every other five to ten games, then we will essentially make a profit as you're going to see here in this video. But you have to get around that greed there. On the next race, let me explain my logic here. So we have Mr. Redacted at 19 to 1, Moon Rocks at 4 to 1, we have Scrawny Nag at 30 to 1, we have Craft Running at 14 to 1, Blue Dream at 2 to 1, and Questionable Dignity at 12 to 1. So off the bat, the ones that I'm looking at are Questionable Dignity, Blue Dream, and I'm looking at Moon Rocks. For this specific race with the number placement and the positioning, Moon Rocks is really sitting right with me, and this is just simply a hunch right here. And I say hunch because the odds of winning are never guaranteed, nor am I ever certain that I'm actually going to win. I just kind of find a common middle ground that I can feel comfortable with, and I place my bet on that horse, and I'm always betting at 10,000. I always want to optimize my profits, which is why I bet at 10,000, but bet what is right for you. Bet what you could afford on your end. So as you can see, though, this race is actually looking really, really good, and it looks as though the hunch that I had is actually going to pay off. And it does look as though Moon Rocks did take the race for this one, and I was rewarded a total of 50,000 chips, as you can see right there. We are one step closer to reaching a million chips for this video. And I can guarantee you, by the end of this video, we are going to reach one million chips. And I also want to note that this is all going to be real time. None of this is going to be fast forwarded. None, nothing is going to be cut out. You'll be able to keep track of the chip count as well along the way. Everything is going to happen real time. One thing that I want to point out with horse racing, we are going to be betting a lot. We are going to be losing a lot. So one thing that we need to get comfortable with is losing. And sometimes we're going to have to place a bet on the horse where we win less as opposed to a horse that we would win more. Kind of get around that grade a bit so that way we can take those 50,000 chip payments. So off the bat, I know I'm going to stay away from Social Media Warrior at 27 to 1. I'm also going to stay away from Wage of Consent at 21 to 1. I'm looking at Dancing Pole, Craft Running. I'm looking at Constant Brag and Los Santos Savior right there. Those are the ones that I'm really focused on and keen to. And once I figured out the ones that I'm actually focused on, I'm going to try to find the middle ground with those horses. I'm going to try to find the horse that best sits in the middle. And I'm looking at Dancing Pole for this race right here. And again, I'm also looking at Constant brag and craft running. I was really leaning towards dancing pole but for this race I'm going to bet on constant brag and again that's kind of just a hunch based bet right there. There is no logical or any evidence backing why I'm doing this. It's just simply I think that this horse is going to sit best in the middle right now and I feel that this horse is going to win. So this race is kind of looking like all over the place and the chances are not looking good for me right now. And look who is in first. We have Dancing Pole in first at the moment and fighting for first. It looks as though Dancing Pole is bringing this one home. And that right there is very upsetting. It's heart wrenching. And that one hurts right there. I assume this is the part where players would get upset, call this game a rip off and then leave upset and never come back. I'm going to keep calm, cool, and collected. I'm going to continue on, and I'm going to keep with this thought process. So right now, we have Banana Hammock that is out of the question. I'm not going to pick that one. Old Skag, I'm not going to pick that one as well as it's 26 to 1. I'm looking at the even. I'm looking at Study Buddy, Pretty as a Pistol. And ultimately, Pretty as a Pistol is the one that I feel confident betting on. So that's the one that I'm going to bet on. In correspondence to the numbers that were there, I do feel like Pretty and Pretty as a pistol, sat best in the middle, and I do feel like that horse is going to win this race right here. And again, I am not sure at all on this. This is just kind of, again, guesstimating, assuming, hoping. And I think that's exactly what gambling is. So for me, I'm just going to keep cool, calm, and collected, and we're just going to try to keep going and do as best as we can. As you can see, the horse that we placed was fourth. We did not win that one. Let's just keep it moving here. So I'm looking at Ghost Dink, which is 10 to 1. Crackers and Please seems pretty good as what? 3 to 1. Uh, Dead Heat Hattie is kind of a bit out of the question. Moon Rock seems decent. Dancing Pole, 9 to 1. And Old Skag is out of the question. For this race, I'm going to bet on Crackers and Please. 
I bet it on Crackers and Police because the second positioning I was fond of, and I wanted to go with Moon Rocks, but something about the fourth positioning I didn't really like, so that's the reason why I went with the horse that I went with. And again, there's not really any logic to it. It's more so of hunch, I guess, base guessing, so to speak. For me personally, I think the hardest part about GTA 5 online horse racing is not so much losing. I'm okay with losing, but it's more so when I have the hunch of a horse that I think is going to win, but I go with another horse because of whatever reason, and then that horse that I initially was going to go with ends up winning. That is probably the hardest part about horse racing. And that race was a perfect example of that. As you can see, Moon Rocks did place first. Sometimes you may want to step a bit outside of the comfort zones of what you're used to placing bets on, and you may end up hitting the bank there. So on this next race, we have Doozy Floozy at 13 to 1, We Scunner 8 to 1, Something Saucy breaking even. We have Pedestrian at 25 to 1, Mud Dragon at 5 to 1, and Dead Fam at 26 to 1. Off the bat, Dead Fam is going to be out. Another one that's going to be out is the even and so is the pedestrian as well. I'm probably going to place my maximum bet on Wiskana because I like the positioning and I do feel that the number sits well in the middle. And that right there is why I have to learn how to not be greedy at times and learn to break even. And breaking even is okay, I suppose. So moving on to the next race here. Tax of Poor 13 to 1. We have Dead Heat Hattie at 17 to 1. Pedestrian 25. That one's automatically out. Bouncy Blessed at 5 to 1 is one that I'm looking at. I'm looking at Hot and Bothered as what? 2 to 1. And Scissor 13 to 1 seems decent. And so does Tax the Poor. So this one is kind of a tricky one right here. And ultimately, I'm going to go with bouncy blessed for this race uh, i just simply like the middle ground i feel like it's the horse that fits best in the middle ground for this specific race and i also like the positioning and again that's pretty much why i place the maximum bet on this horse and i think that we just kind of have to do this enough and we take those wins as they come and i think that if we play enough races we will have enough wins we just kind of have to be calculated with the choices that we're making and that's what i'm trying to share with you all here in this video we're getting a bit closer as our horse plays second, but we are now down to 583,840 chips. This next race, we are working with Snatched Your Mama at Breaking Even, Hot and Bothered 2 to 1, Bleep Me Baby at 7 to 1. Off the bat, I'm thinking about Bleep Me Baby because I do like those ratios. Um, let's see, we have Hippie Crack at 23, which is out. Bleep Me Baby because I want to take a chance on the odd positioning and the odd number as well. So this is, again, just a hunt-based guess right here. There's no guarantee that I'm going to win any of these races right here. This is just the logic thought process that I'm going through to make these choices and place these bets. I've personally grown to love horse racing within GTA as even just watching the horse and hoping to win is enough. As you can see though, Bleep Me Baby is looking good for this race. Everything is looking great and I actually feel very, very good that we may win this race right and we took it home. So the bet that we placed on Bleep Me Baby brought me 80,000 chips and we are now looking at a grand total of 653,840 chips as you can see right here. So that right there gives me some more motivation to keep on going. Let's go ahead and step on into another race here. So let's place another bet, and these are all going to be single events right here. We have Pretty as a Pistol, which is one that I'm looking at at 4 to 1. We have Reach Around, looking at 6 to 1. Borrowed at 12 to 1. I'm going to stay away from that one, I think. Uh, Feed the Trolls, I'm definitely going to stay away from. And Dr. D's, I'm probably going to stay away from. I'm going to go with placing a bet on Pretty as a Pistol, and it's going to be a max bet. So this race is actually looking pretty good as well. As you can see, the horse that I chose to bet on is performing the best right now. And again, this is never guaranteed. And right here is one of those moments where it's kind of heart-wrenching. And again, this is one of those walk-away moments where most players maybe would just get up and walk away. Well, I feel that it's better if you have the funds to kind of stick it out and keep placing bets. 
after all we are trying to get to a million chips for this video right here so looking at this race some of the horses that do stand out is a friendly fire down at 901 i like the positioning as well i stay away from old ill will all the time Old Ill Will is the highest paying out horse, if I'm correct, at 300,000. Um, the performance isn't there. I've personally never been in a race where I've seen Old Ill Will win. I could be incorrect, as I do have a video where I do horse racing for over an hour and 30 minutes for you all. It's also available on my YouTube channel, so be sure to check that out. Okay, I am a little bit upset here that we did lose. However, I keep losing in around second or third place, so I'm really happy with those results. So I'm gonna keep it going. The logic that I'm using is kind of working for the algorithm of this game right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep trying to win here. So Pretty as a Pistol is looking good to me. I do like the positioning and odds. Uh, Mr. Scissors as well is kind of looking nice at seven to one. So these two I'm kind of fixated on. I am kind of thinking about even it's a trap as I should probably work on my greed, but. I can't. So for this bet, I'm gonna place my bet on Mr. Scissors at seven to one and position one, and we're gonna see how this race goes. Okay, so this race was just bombed. I probably should have put a little bit more thought into the bet that I placed. However, we live and we learn. You kind of get the idea behind this. So I'm taking a lot of losses here as well, but I'm real determined to get to that 1 million chips here on this video for you all. Now I'm looking at Dr. D's here and it's at five to one. That one's actually looking really nice. I'm gonna stay away from Northern Lights. I'm going to stay away from Hard Time Done. I'm gonna stay away from Old Ill Will. So I placed a max bet on Dr. D's here looking at five to one in position one as well. Now watching horses race for a bet that we place is actually uh, fun and it's real nerve wracking. So as you can see right here, this race is actually looking really good. This is one that is looking in my favor. The horse that I chose is performing well. Right now it's hit or miss. Hopefully the horse is definitely making a comeback. So you can kind of get right there. We're definitely taking this one home. So you can see when it's when we win, it's definitely worth it. But we kind of have to stick around for those losses. Right there, we won sixty thousand chips. Now, although the gains that I am making right here are kind of small, I am going to place bets correctly where we bet on horses and we win bigger. But we have to be patient and we have to do that without losing a lot. So right now I'm looking at Mr. Scissors at 7 to 1. I'm looking at Los Santos Saviors at 5 to 1. These are looking really nice. I kind of like their positionings as well. I'm more in favor for Mr. Scissors positioning. I'm really leaning more towards Los Santos Savior at 5 to 1. The positioning is a little bit off, but I guess that's the name of this game. I'm going to take the chance. I'm going to go with Los Santos Savior for this race. So there was nothing exciting about this race for me. My bet was completely off. And again, I want you to see real time that this is going to happen. For me, it is a little bit discouraging, but not enough to make me stop. I'm definitely going to keep going. I'm going to get that million chips right here in this video with you all. Going on to the next race, we see Mud Dragon at 5 to 1. I like that ratio in positioning. Clap back Charlie. I also like that ratio in correspondence to all of the other horses, but the positioning is a little bit off for me. And again, the name of the game is to take chances. So I'm going to take that chance and I'm going to pick Clapback Charlie for this race right here and we're going to see what happens. Now that's really... Um, 
aggravating there as Mud Dragon did win that race and I did like that positioning at 5-1 to one, and it was on the first positioning and I was originally going to go with that but I didn't so those are the times that we really have to just kind of suck it up and keep it moving so on this one right here I'm looking at Drone Warning at 8-1 to one. I am looking at Ghost Inc at 10-1 to one. I'm really fond of both of those positions at 1-6 and six. so for me I think for this race I'm going to end up going with I'm going to go with Ghost Dink for this race right here because I like the ratio at 10 to 1 and I also like the 6 positioning there and it's nothing greater than that. I do feel like those odds may be favored in this race right here so that's the reason why I went with that horse. So here is another loss that we are going to take, and again, this is something that we kind of just have to push through. This is also part of the game. So moving on to the next race, and also I just want to reiterate, these are all going to be single events. I'm not going to do any main events for this video right here. I'm betting on Dancing Poe, or Dancing Poe at 9 to 1. I do like that ratio. I'm thinking about Questionable Dignity at 12 to 1 as well, just because I'm liking that payout as well. For this one, I'm going to roll the dice and I'm going to place my bet on questionable dignity. I did like the ratio, however, the fourth positioning was a little bit iffy for me. But I think a big part of this game is being able to go with that initial gut instinct and go with your initial bet because for me, questionable dignity was standing out right off the rip, which is why I went with it. As you can see, in this race is actually performing and I'm starting to feel real grateful that I took a chance on that fourth positioning as questionable dignity is in the lead. It does look as though we brought this one home and as you can see, we brought home 130,000 chips from that round and we have a grand total of 763,840 chips. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is why it's very important to kind of see it through, stick it out, keep placing bets, and stick around enough to win. For me personally, it's really the wins that I get within the horse racing that really makes it worthwhile. So, going on into the next race, off the bat, I'm looking at Hennigan Steed right away, as you can see, at 4-1, to one, and I also like that 2 positioning. So every single time, I'm looking at the horse ratios in terms of performance, and I'm also looking at their positioning. For this race, I'm going to place a maximum bet on Hennigan Steed. And off the bat, we are not off to a good start. However, it's definitely not over. As you can see, my horse is definitely making a comeback and we are now in first. So it does look as though we have a great shot at performing the rest of the way throughout this race right here so that we could bring home first. There's still, oh, there we go, see? So we kind of lost it right there. We're not quite, and then Steed's coming back, as you can see. So we might take this one, we're actually taking this one home. So as you can see, another race back to back and we brought home 50,000 chips on this one, bringing us to a grand total of 803,000. 840 chips. So as you can see, we're all essentially one choice away from stacking up those chips right there. And, and we have a grand total though of 803,840 chips. That's pretty good to me, enough to keep on going. So I'm going to move on into the next event right here. I'm very determined to reach a million chips in this video with you all. If we don't, it's okay, but you kind of get the idea that there is kind of a method to the madness. Off the bat, constant brag is standing out at 3 to 1, but I don't like the positioning. Breaking even may be a better way to go in this one, but again, my greed won't allow me to do so, so I'm going to place the bet on constant brag. And it's very upsetting because these are those races right here that if I would have just overcame my greed, I had the opportunity to do better. I chose not to. I lost right there. As you see, the original horse, it's a trap. We would have broke even, but we still would have won 10. That's a loss right there, and that's just a shame. But moving on into the next race right here, Creepy Dentist is standing out. I do like the positioning and the ratio. I mean, that even right there really gets me. Um, and as you can see, there's two in this race. So I'm going to kind of cancel the noise. I'm going to go with Creepy Dentist. I feel at 7 to 1, as I feel that may be the better way to go. But you can see I'm kind of on the fence there. Ultimately, I'm going to place a bet on Creepy Dentist at the 7 to 1, and that's going to be in the second position. And like every race, we're kind of just going to see what happens here. The 
So this race right here was just completely bad. This one was completely nuked. We bombed it. That one was a bad race all in general. The logic, the method to the madness did not work in that race right there. And as you can see, real time, it does happen and it's going to happen. And for me, that's okay. I'm still going to stick with the, I'm still going to stick to my guns. I'm going to stick with what I know and I'm going to keep going with it. So I'm looking at Dr. D's and I'm looking at dancing shoes. I do like those ratios, but I like the positioning of one better. As you can see, those two are at both five to one. I'm also looking at questionable dignity because I do like those ratios and correspondence to all of the other horses and I do like the second positioning. So you can see this is the logic that I'm thinking to myself to kind of make and pick my horse and place my bet. This right here is truly upsetting because originally the horse that I was kind of fixated on was the horse that is actually going to bring it home is what it looks like. And sure enough, it did. My horse placed fourth, if I'm correct, fifth, as a matter of fact. So this was just a bad race in general. Um, that's really upsetting because I hate when that happens, when I know that this may be the horse, but I go for the horse that's paying out a little bit more. That's where I go wrong. And I remember I went bank. I uh, lost a lot of uh, chips that way where I would just simply want to go for the biggest payout. So don't always go for the biggest payout go for the best probability go for the best ratios and the best positionings so for this race right here robocall is one that stands out as well as mr scissors at seven to one it corresponds to all of the other horses i do kind of like where mr scissors sits at second positioning with a ratio of seven to one so you can see right here, right off the rip, my horse is actually performing. It is losing and is in second right now. However, it's still early on in the race. There's still plenty of time to win this race right here. But my horse is maintaining its performance throughout the entire race. I guess that's due to the ratios and positioning that it's in. And as you can see, it looks like it's really close. And we definitely brought this one home. And that brings us with... 80,000 chips to a grand total of 843,840 chips total. So at this point, reaching a million chips here on this video with you all is a definite probability, especially at this pace. We're definitely going to take some more losses, but let's see if we could win more. So uh, getting here at three to one is looking nice. I'm also looking at the even as some of the evens have seemed to perform as well. So for this race, I'm setting on getting hottie at three to one and the six positioning. I do like those ratios and correspondence to all of the other horses. Let's see what happens within this race. This race is definitely not in my favor as it doesn't look as though we're bringing anything home for this one. That's a shame we place fourth on that one. We're just going to move on to the next race and we're going to keep it going. So off the rip for this race, I am looking off the bat at Weiss Gunners. I do like 8-1. I do like Nun's Orders as well at 9-1, but I don't like the positioning. Uh, hot and bothered seems kind of hit or miss. That's one that I would maybe just take a bet on. But for this race, it's going to be Nun's Orders and we're just going to see how it goes. This race is definitely not looking good for us either, and I'm just going to be okay with that. We are at 823,840 chips total. We placed dirt on that race. Not too bad. Moving on into the next race, Microaggression stands out. Bleep Me Baby as well at 7 to 1 with 6 positioning. I do like Lover Speed at 2 to 1 as well and second, but for this one, we are going to go with Bleep Me Baby, and we're going to go ahead and see what happens.
Here's another race that's definitely not looking in our favor. We're just going to have to take the losses as they come. But we have to be getting a win here soon in order to reach 1 mil in a timely manner, let alone here in this video. So on this one right here, I am looking at this even total belt here. I'm also looking at score to go. Miss Trigger definitely out of the question. Mr. Scissors also 7-1 to one I like, but I don't like that positioning. So ultimately, I'm going to go with positioning 1 square to go. I'm going to place my bet there. This is one of those moments where I should have just initially followed my gut instinct and bet on the horse that I initially wanted to bet on. However, that didn't work out that way. Mr. Scissors would have brought home the payment there. Moving on to the next race. Crackers and Please it does seem like a good positioning. I do like the ratio and correspondence to the other ones. I'm also interested in There She Blows at 2 to 1 and Reach Down There at 6 to 1 as well. Ultimately, for this race, I'm going to be placing my bet on Crackers and Police with the second positioning at the ratio of 3 to 1. I'm just going to hope that this horse outperforms the other horses to bring me home something. And as of right now, the horse, the race is actually looking pretty good. My horse is in second, and we are now in first. So right now, the race is looking pretty good, but anything could change at any moment. Hopefully, we don't fall too far behind. Hopefully, we can pick it back up as we still have an opportunity to win. Let's go ahead and see if we can rush it. Come, Nope. So, we got second there. It was real close. That's a shame, but we didn't reach it. Uh, Social Media Warrior won first. We got second on that one. So, on this race right here, Lover's Speed is definitely standing out at 2-1. to one. I do like that second positioning, but I'm also fond of Bleep Me Baby at 7-1. to one. I think I'm going to roll the dice, and I'm going to be placing a bet on Lover's Speed. So, I'm going to go with Lover's Speed at the second positioning with the ratio of 2-1, to one, and I'm going to go ahead and just hope for the best for this race right here. Hopefully, we can bring home something. If not, we're just going to keep it moving. I'm very determined, again, to reach that million here in this video with you all, so that way you can see and kind of get a method to the madness. Right now, we are in first and the race is looking pretty good but as you can see this horse came out of nowhere hopefully we can catch up and turn that around it is not looking too good for us and it's actually coming really close and again we got second place and we lost two drone warning that's another shame and these are i mean don't get me wrong they're very frustrating but we have to kind of keep pushing through i'm liking bleep me baby but i'm not liking the positioning of fourth i'm looking at i'm going to stay away from salty i think ultimately i'm going to go with bleep me baby here i'm just going to kind of roll the dice and hope for the best again There's not much to say about this race. This race was another bomb. We didn't do so well. I believe we got third on that one. Yes, we did. So moving on to the next race, I'm just going to keep it going. I'm not going to focus on the frustration. Off the bat, Yellow Sunshine stands out. So does that even. I like the positioning of both. Breaking even just never sits right with me. Five to one seems decent in correspondence to the other, but as well as Divorce Doctor, I do like the seven to one ratio as well as the six positioning of the placement. So I'm not too certain. I think ultimately I may end up going with it's hard to kind of say i'm not really too sure of this race i don't like this lineup right here i mean up to a rider kind of stands out but that fifth positioning i'm not too fond of um it's hard to say for this race i'm probably just going to pick randomly and roll the dice i mean not a cent not random at, at that but i'm going to kind of just use a, a guesstimate of what i think is going to happen um there was really no positioning or ratios that i went with on this race is ultimately what i'm trying to say i don't have high hopes for this race we'll just see how it goes so for this race it doesn't look as though the horse that we betted on is performing we are currently in third we're now in first we're back at second and we dropped to the back right there as you can see for this race, we didn't win. We weren't too far off. We placed fourth. It's not great, not the best. I'm just going to simply move on and forget about that race right there. I'm um, looking at Crackers and Please. I do like 
3 to 1 ratio in the second position. I do like Clapback Charlie with 10 to 1 and position 1. Divorce Doctor is also standing out at 7 to 1 and 4. Los Santos Saviors. I'm not really too keen or fond of that positioning or the ratio in correspondence to all of the other horses. Ultimately, I'm going to be going with Clapback Charlie with the first position at the ratio of 10 to 1, and I'm going to hope for the best. I feel like these horse races are emotional games. They tug a war with you all the time. Like right now, we are doing well. We're simply, you know, the race can go south or it can go up at any point throughout any point of any race. And that is the tug of war that I'm trying to talk about here. As you can see, this race is actually starting to look real good for us. We are in first place. If we bring this one home, this is going to be a big payment right here. And it does look as though we want it. So with Clapback Charlie, we brought home 110,000 chips. That's bringing us to a grand total of 863,840 chips. Let's go ahead and keep on going now that we're getting this momentum. We are not far from a million at all. So off the bat here, Hennigan Steed is standing out. Dexy Runner as well. I do like those ratios and the positions. Uh, Miss Triggered off the bat is going to be out. Miss Mary Jane off the bat. I think for this race, I may end up going with a flipped wig as I kind of just want to throw the dice. I do like the ratio and correspondence to all of the other horses. I do like the position as well. So again, like every other race, I'm going to place my maximum bet and I'm going to hope for the best. So it does seem as though this race turned on me and it's not looking too good for us. Um, we are in second. We lost down to third. So we lost that race in third place if I'm correct. Yes, we lost in third. Snatch your mama won first. I'm going to take the losses as they come and we're going to keep on going. So off the bat, I am looking at getting haughty. I do like the ratio and position. Uh, doozy there sounds good as well on fifth position with 13 to 1 in correspondence to the other. However, it's a little tricky because Invade Grenade also has 13 to 1. However, it's in second position. So for this race, I think ultimately I'm just going to roll the dice and then we're going to go with Doozy there on the fifth position at 13 to 1. And again, like every other race, I'm just simply going to hope for the best. There is no guarantee and I can't really exhaust that enough here throughout this video. And I'm just trying to show you all the method to the madness here of this horse racing and take what you want leave what you don't hopefully by the end of this video you can find something useful. So for this race, it's not looking too bad, but it's not looking great right now. We're here, we are in second and at any point we can pick up, but it doesn't look as though my horse is going to fight for any more speed than that. So we did come in second and the first one was old skag and again another loss we just have to take. Moving on into the next race, Osgag is at 28 and 1, which is a nice payout, which is a horse that actually just won. That's a shame right there. Uh, Bouncy Blessed at 5 to 1 is one that stands out. Uh, better than nothing is kind of hit or miss. That's kind of one that I would just roll the dice on and hope to win that big. Invade Grenade, I'm not really fond of the third position or 13 to 1 ratio. So this one's another tricky race that I'm not too sure of. I mean, for me, any horse at this point would be as good as it gets. Ultimately, I'm going to decide to go with... Let's just roll the dice and hope to win big. I'm going to place my bet on better than nothing, and then we're going to see what happens. I suppose that's what happens when we kind of just shoot in the dark there like that. That's definitely not a way to go about it. So as you can see, we play six. One of the worst, if not the worst, that's the last place there. So we placed last on that last race. We're just going to keep it going and forget about it like we do. Nun's Orders is standing out at 9-1. to one. Position 3 is not quite keen for me, um, so to speak. I do like Croc here at 8-1. Fifth position is kind of decent as well. I'm probably going to take my bet on Nun's Order here, and I'm just going to kind of hope for the best. Nun's Order is the third position at 9 to 1 ratio, and as you can see, that is the horse that's in first place, and it does seem to be performing well right now in this race. We now fell completely back. However, things can change at any point throughout any race from my personal experience. So we still have a fighting chance, and as you can see, my horse is coming right back in. And here is a great time to stay ahead, and I hope my horse does that. I hope, nope, it doesn't, it looks as though we lost that one as well. And you see, that's a very frustrating race right there. We placed third for a very brief moment. I actually thought that I was going to win. 
I mean, actually just forget about that one before we just get frustrated and caught up and want to leave. So moving on here, I'm looking at Nunn's order again at 9 to 1, and I would actually place my money again on there. I do like the positioning and ratio, but for this race, I'm actually going to do the second horse with the positioning of 2 to 1 ratio, second position. I'm going to hope for the best. So this race right here looks as though we're going to bring this one home and it looks as though we're going to bring a grand total of 30,000 chips home. We have a total of 843,840 chips right now. Moving on to the next race, Creepy Dentist is one that's standing out right away at 7 to 1 ratio, second position. Drunken as well in 6th place or 6th position, 14 to 1 ratio is also looking nice. Both of them look great in correspondence to all of the other horses. Ultimately, I'm going to place my bet on the 6th horse at the 14 to 1 ratio, 6th position, and then we're going to see how well this horse performs. So right now, the race is not looking so great. However, races change at split moment. So any moment now, we could go ahead and take this race home. As you can see, my horse is beginning to perform, and we are currently in first. This is looking great as we are now later in the race. If at this pace, it looks as though we're definitely going to bring this one home. It's coming really close, and we won. So this one right here has to be the biggest win that I've encountered in this video at 150,000 chips. Our grand total that we are at now is 983,840. 40 chips we are literally one race away from reaching a million so let's go ahead and proceed on to another race and let's see if we can actually get this up there to 1 million chips moving on into the next race and again we're always going to play single events off the bat, I am looking at Invade Grenade, 13 to 1 ratio, position 2. I'm also loving Hennigan Steed there at 4 to 1, position 3. Croc here at 8 to 1, position 1 seems decent as well. I can never really learn to break even. Ultimately, I am going to place my bet on position 3, ratio 4 to 1, and I am going to hope for the best. I really want to hit that million chips for you all here. That race right there was a bust. It's not It's not good. It's a no-go. We didn't take home anything in that race. We placed third. Let's just move on to the next race, and then we're going to place another single event here. Borrowed Sorrow is one that's standing out. 12 to 1 ratio. I'm not liking that position, though. Flipped Wig at 12 to 1 stands out. I do like that positioning of fifth as well. Um, I think I'm going to place my bet on 12 to 1, position 5. Let's see what happens. Here's another race that's a complete bust. Now, I have to win a race within at least the next three to five or in the next three to five races in order for me to hit a million still here within a timely manner. Hennigan Steed is one that I'm very fond of right now at four to one, and I do like that positioning with the payout of 50K. If we win that race, we may be able to make it to that one mil. That is the horse that I'm going to go with more than likely. Dexy Runner also seems well. I'm going to go with my initial gut instinct, and I'm going to place my bet on Steed there, and that is going to be horse of ratio four to one with the position one. So I'm hoping that Hennigan Steed can perform throughout this race and really bring me home there to that one million chips. I I do want to hit that 1 million for you all just for a better tutorial but you can kind of get the idea there is a definite method to the madness this this race is actually coming really close steed is in first place and it does look as though we're going to bring this one home it does look as though we're going to hit that million right here on this race and we did it we hit 1 million chips right here on this race using hennigan steed we started with 603,840 chips and we finished with 1,003,840 chips
That right there is how I earn 1 million ships through horse racing. If you have any questions about anything that you saw or heard throughout this video, I'm going to highly encourage you to drop a comment down below and I will do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. I have social medias under the same name as this YouTube channel. I would truly appreciate your support on there as well. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring my bell as I will be bringing a lot more videos like this for you all. Add me on Xbox so we can earn some GTA money online. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for tuning in. Y'all have a great day.